Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, Gospel reading speaks uh, of the cataclysm that will accompany the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's going to be the very, very end time. And you know that the picture is not in rainbow color. Although for the first time a rainbow appears in the sky immediately after the flood, it was the first heavenly sign that was given to man. It was associated with the death of the first world, or the most of it. And the sign of covenant in the form of the rainbow indicated the end of the flood. Is there a connection between this event and second coming? I think so. The flood was a watershed between the first humanity marked in a atrocities and a new humanity that descended from Noah. The second coming is also the division of all mankind in two parts according to the teaching of Christ about the last days. Did water play a role in this separation? The answer to this question will be related to the doctrine of baptism. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. A few weeks ago we read the Gospel in which Christ spoke of the last day and linked the state of humanity in that time to the time of Noah. And uh, that is good comparison. A significant difference was in the signs. The rainbow, uh, the sign of the covenant, appears in heaven after everything that had happened. And the sign of the last day, described, described of Christ, uh, precedes his coming. Thus, and when you see it come true, know that the kingdom of God is near. Many people are afraid of the last days. After all, the signs that point to them will shake the human mind, cause fear and honor. Obviously, the second coming of Christ will, be, will not go unnoticed. The text we will heard talks about sign of the moon the sun and the stars, we can say that the, the evangelist Luke protects us, uh, protects our mind, but Mark speaks uh, of what signs will be in those days after that sorrow and the sun will, shake, will uh, fade and the moon will not give its light and the stars will, not, will, fall, will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven will be wavered. Scripture tells us of one instance when the sun uh, faded, and it, that was the most important event in the life of mankind. For three hours there was a darkness all over the earth, and earth shook, the coffin opened, and the dead appeared to the people of, in Jerusalem. The people could not understand why all this happened. Some slaved, slaved themselves in the chest, then they realized that what happened, but it was too late. The Son of God has already been nailed to the cross. His life forces has abandoned him. But the last word was, Father, unto your hands I surrendered my spirit. It was a prayer of trust in Heavenly Father. He who suffered himself unto the hands of Heavenly Father will be blessed. What happened? when on Calvary had a, an impact on all of 
human history and don't think of it uh, as just something global but having little to do with me personally. Some people reflect on greatness of God and their role in, on earth. God is in heaven and I am here on earth. My life is no so meaningful for God who created heaven and earth and I will live as I see and how I feed my life. God does, God does not care about me. Some people think so. We can compare planet Earth to other planets in the solar system and even galaxies. The Earth is not the largest, but it is on this planet that life exists. God created uh, earth and life here. The man is not a grain of sun lost in the vast expanses of the universe, but man is the crown of all material creation of God. This is a reflection of the role of man in the universe we may found in Eighth, eighth Psalm. When I look at your heaven, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have placed, that there is a man that you remember him, and the son of man that you visit him. Have you diminished him much more before angels? By glory and honor you have crowned him. You have placed him, Lord, over the works of your hands. You have placed everything under his feet. Do we understand the dignity with which the Lord has endured man? It is permissible for the ruler of the world to behave this way. We look forward to the Savior's return and understand that each of us is important for him. We will not dissolve in the crowd. We will not hide behind the broad back of our comrades. It is not our way of waiting. The first man, Adam, hide from God after the fall. As Adam, as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will come and live. We are like Adam in sin. But we should not be like him, but we should like Christ. Christ looked uh, to his heavenly Father. When it begins to come true, then you exclaim and lift up your heads, for your deliverance is approaching. Therefore, everyone should test himself as Apostle Paul calls. Test yourself. Wherever you are in faith, examine yourself. After all, we are required to be faithful. Then we can truly look to Christ coming in glory. If we look in Christ now, then it will not be a problem for us. For a sinner who does not know Christ, does not trust in Him, it will be not possible to raise His head and look at Christ, since we will not give it to, to do it. Those who have already placed their trust in Christ Jesus, cast off all burdens and sins and will live this passion of the last day, looking to the leader and performer of the faith, Jesus. Salvation is glorious to us. And maybe the most important words in today's Gospel are not about signs, not about people who will breathe with fear and dissipation coming up on the universe, but not even the fig tree about which I have not said a word today. The most important words of this Gospel are heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass. There are 
another Bible verses about it. In the Epistle of Hebrew, we may read, In the beginning of the earth, thou hast found in the earth and the heavens a work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt dwell. In the prophet Isaiah, lift up your eyes to the heaven and look down on earth, for the heaven will disappear like smoke, and earth will decay like clothes, and its inhabitants will also die out. But my salvation will be eternal, and my truth will not cease. And also, Apostle Peter said in his epistle, But the word of the Lord dwells forever. This is the word that has been preached to you. The word of God is something we can really live by. And thanks God that even today we turn to him to understand how we should expect the Lord Jesus the judge of heaven on earth for our Savior. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.